Welcome to my flow rate video. What I'd like to do is derive a couple of big formulas for flow rate. Uh, the question being, I've got some flow of a fluid going by, air, water, whatever, and uh, how much is flowing by per unit time? How much fluid? What, what mass of fluid per unit time or what volume of fluid per unit time? And these are formulas that you'll see at the beginning of, of any fluid mechanics course. And I mostly want to show that you can get these formulas pretty quickly if you let yourself make some really big assumptions. Now in the next video I'll talk about, well, what if you don't want to make those assumptions? But for now, I'd like to get some results quickly. I'm going to let myself make some big assumptions. Now I also want to kind of play a little game here. I don't want to tell you what my assumptions are until the end. So let me just kind of fly. You see how much you're nodding your head and saying, yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like that. And, and see if you go, wait a minute, he shouldn't have done that. And it'll just be a fun little exercise. So here we go. Here's my window. I got fluid coming through here. And the question is, what is the amount of fluid per unit time? That would be a flow rate. What is the amount of fluid per unit time? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let some time go by. Um, let time dt go by here and ask myself what's going to happen. Well, maybe up at this corner of the window here I got a fluid particle and it's got a certain velocity and it's coming out the window and you start your watch and it's coming out and stop your watch at after time dt and it's over there now. So this particle will move over to here. And maybe I got a fluid particle over at this corner kind of doing the same thing. It's going to come straight out the window like this. Here's another fluid particle coming straight out the window like this. And I'm basically building a nice kind of a cube shape here. Or brick shape really. So some kind of a prism, you know. Some kind of a right prism. Anyway. A shape. I've defined a volume here. Um, so if I want to ask the question, how much, I can just calculate the volume here. So I'm going to say volume. Now, in order to get the volume, I'm going to need to know the dimensions. So this has a certain area, and I need to multiply it by this dimension here. How far did that fluid particle go in time dt? Well, distance is rate times time. And if the velocity is v, if the rate is v, and the time was dt, then I can say v times dt, that's how far the fluid particle went. And so how tall is this box? It's got this, this uh, dimension v times dt. So the volume here, which is just an incremental dif infinitesimal volume, I should use a dv really, script v for volume, a regular v for velocity. But anyway, the volume here, dv, would be, take this cross-sectional area, and multiply it by this dimension, which is v times dt. So I've got a actually a really nice result. Now I'm going to pull the pull the old divide both sides by dt trick, and here I am. dv dt equals a times v. This is change in volume with respect to time, which we usually use the symbol q dot for that actually, but that's what it is. Change in volume with respect to time. It's a volume flow rate, and it's equal to the cross-sectional area times the velocity of our fluid. And that's one of our two big, big, nice results. Q dot equals A times V. Volume flow rate. If you want to talk about mass flow rate, how much mass is in that box, well mass is density times volume. So this little increment of mass in the box, I'll call it dm, would be density times the dV, the little increment of volume. And I'll make a little substitution here. dv is the same as a times v times dt. So I'll put that right there, a times v times dt. I'll pull the old divide both sides by dt trick once more. And look what we got here. Change in mass with respect to time. We usually use an m dot for that. A little easier to write. So m dot, mass flow rate, change in mass per unit time, kilograms per second, something like that, is rho times a times v, the density of the fluid times the cross-sectional area times the velocity of the fluid. And this is our other big, big result. And I call it big because it, it does get used a lot. Warning, we made some assumptions when we came up with these formulas, right? You can't just use these formulas any old place, any old time. You got to think about the assumptions that went into them. So 
Ask yourself, what assumptions did I make here? Pause. <laughs> okay, start playing again. Um, well, the first thing I did is I said, hey, I got this fluid particle. And it came over the time dt, it went from here to here. I drew it coming straight out the window here. Do I know that it's coming straight out the window here? Not really. Could it be going this way? Could it be going this way? Could it be going some other way? Sure it could. So I don't know that it's coming straight out the window. I just assumed it was coming out the window. So the assumptions are velocity is pointed straight out the window. That's a big assumption. Might not be a bad assumption if you had like a pipe or something where you've got walls here and it's kind of constrained and it has to go this way. But if you just got an open window, it might not be such a good assumption. So anyway, velocity is pointed straight out the window was a big assumption that goes into these formulas. What's another assumption? Well, I said, okay, this fluid particle is going to go to here. And so is this one. This particle is going to do basically the same thing. It's going to come straight out. It's going to go the same distance. In other words, I was assuming that the velocity here is the same as here, is the same as here, is the same as everywhere. So like even in the middle of the area someplace, you've got uh, some velocity particle on the plane of the window. It will come out and end up on the plane of you know this right side of the brick shape here. So point is straight out the window and uniform across the area of the window. Big assumption, okay? It's not going to be true for all windows. But I made that assumption, and if I make that assumption, I get this nice result. So the velocity is pointed straight out. It's uniform across the area of the window. I also kind of made the assumption that density was uniform across the area of the window. I did that right here when I said, oh yeah, the density times the volume. And the density is just this one number that I can use. And so I assume the density was the same everywhere, right? So density uniform across the window. And these are my three major assumptions that I made for these formulas. Now, I need to warn you about something. Sometimes people say, well, you know, you assumed it was the same density everywhere, but couldn't you use, like, uh, maybe just some kind of an average density and, and the cross-sectional area and then maybe some kind of average velocity? And the answer is not if you want to be careful. This doesn't work, actually, to just use an average density and average velocity, or I shouldn't say it'll never work, but it, it, it won't, in general, be a true situation. Um, and just to demonstrate that, let me just let me just play with numbers over here to show you why you shouldn't do such things. Um, let's, let's take this window and break it into two, like an upper and a lower part or something. Upper part, lower part. And I'm going to say, I'm going to keep track of density, volume, and area. And let's do it this way. Um, let's just make up numbers. I'm just completely making up numbers. In the upper part, the density was 1 and the volume was 2. Okay, And the area was 1. Okay? In the lower half-ish, the density was, I don't know, 3. And the velocity was 4 and the area was 1. Okay. If you used a row bar, A times a V bar, what would you get? The average density would be 2. The area, the total area, would be 2. The average velocity would be, the average of 2 and 4 is 3. You're getting 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, That would be like saying, oh yeah, the mass flow rate's got to be something like 12. Well, now wait a minute. Across the upper half here, where the density is uniform at 1, the velocity is uniform at 2, that means I can use rho AV. I get 1 times 2 times 1 is 2. So I got a flow of 2 through the upper box. In the lower box, I got a 3 times a 4 times a 1. 3 times 4 is 12 times 1 is 12. And if I add up these flows, I got 14. I don't got 12. Pardon my French. I don't have 12. So notice this is not uh, this is not something you can do. You got to be very careful about these things. Uh, fluid mechanics is a highly mathematical course, and you you need to become aware of all kinds of little mathematical ramifications. And can I assume this? And can I assume that? And I just want to point this out because this is a mistake I used to make, and I don't make it anymore. 